Some tutorial slash rehash of an old tutorial that I've been meaning to do for a very long time probably over a year um, it's an old tutorial of mine about um, making chord progressions and stuff like that now back in that old tutorial which I'll link somewhere on the screen for you if you want to go back and look at that um, I never used to talk on my microphone or anything it was all using annotations but there's some really good information in there which I'll go over again uh, in this video uh, I've learned a lot more since that video, um, so I'm going to hopefully throw in a lot of new tricks and stuff that I use um, when creating my own pro chord progressions uh, that you'll hopefully find useful. Uh, what spurred me to make this new rehash of this uh, tutorial was A, because the, the last one you know got tons and tons of views, um, which was great, and second was I was working on this track, uh, and that's going really well, but I wrote quite a really powerful good chord progression in this one um, and I'll show you what I mean here and you'll hear it so as you can hear there it's quite powerful it's got a really good progression to it um, it sounds pretty awesome. We're going to start a new project to make some new chord progressions. Now, I'm not practiced this chord progression at all. Uh, this is going to be totally on the fly, but honestly, you don't need tons of music theory knowledge to, to get these chords down and get them correct and make sure they're in key. It's really easy. So stick by me. We're going to complete a very daunting task of creating long chord progressions very easily. So let's get on with it. Uh, do we want to save that? I can't remember what I did, but we'll save it anyway. Right, so I'm going to use the EXS24 on here. That's what I used for the strings in that last, um, in the last chord progression I used. And the strings work really well with these kind of deep, uh, emotional chord progressions that I'm creating. But, the, you know, you can, any plugins that you've got, third party plugins like Spire, uh, massive anything like that will work obviously um, but as I say just keep it simple and so you guys can use the EX uh, S24 that is included in logic so you guys will be able to recreate this sound it's very easy to have so we don't need that uh, we're gonna highlight that I always work at 128 but you can work at whatever you want we're gonna go up here uh, as I say, these are all included in Logic X. If, if you don't have all these, what you can do is come up here and go to download, no, not download, where is it? Sound library, yeah. Sound library, download all available sounds or open up the sound manager and you can download bits and bats that you want instead of downloading it all, which is what I did. And I just download anything that I want. So if we go to orchestral, go to strings and then you've got all these different kinds of strings here strings ensemble is pretty good if i bring up the on-screen keyboard because i don't have my midi keyboard set up at the moment you can do that by pressing command and k by the way so that sounds good what about full strings uh studio strings Sounds okay. Well, I don't know what kind of... I'm not a pianist, by the way. I just kind of make up notes and it sounds okay most of the time. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, uh, we'll go with full strings, just for the uh, name. It implies that it's got quite a lot of instruments, which is what we want working together. Uh, so... How are we going to make these chord progressions with very little knowledge of music theory? Right, there is a couple of ways that we can do this very easily. Uh, I'm going to go over the way that I went over in the last video if you watched that, which is kind of these cheat sheets that I've got where I pulled off the internet. Um, and that explains musical scales um, in minor scales, major scales and the keys that are included in those. So I'll bring one of those across now. 
so here we have the minus scales and it looks very daunting if you don't know what you're looking at uh, but it's very very simple really so you've got the the keys on the piano here so you have white key white key white keys and these gray ones are actually black keys these ones here um, so you've got your two black ones and then your three black ones there as you're looking down at the keyboard uh, or piano uh, so here you have all the different chords or keys in and, and what the, the keys of those scales consist of. So if we were to look here at the D minor scale, our first key in that scale is a D. So you can come down here, come up to number one, and there you have your first key of the D minor scale. You go to the next key, which would be E. The next key would be F, and so forth and so forth. And there's always seven keys in a scale. So what we can do with that information is I'm going to bring that out of the way at the uh, for a second and I'll keep bobbing it back in uh, just so you can have a look. So I've got it on my, because I've got three monitors, I've just got it to the side so I can still reference that, that picture, but keep that in mind. I'll, like I say, I'll go back to it. So uh, let's go for E minor, okay? So here we have all our keys and as I said, the scales consist of seven keys across one octave. So there's one octave, there's two, and there's three, etc. So we're gonna start down here because I want them real low bass notes. Um, so what I'm gonna do is the E minor scale, which is here, our first key is of E. So I'm gonna do is paste C, D, E. So that's the E key there, and I'm gonna paste a note there. And then the second key will be this which is F sharp. So I'm gonna put that onto there, which is that key there. And then the next one is that key. The next one is that key. And then the next one is uh, that key, then that key, and then a D to finish it off. And as I say, it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven keys, and that is an E minor scale right there. So what I'm gonna do is gonna copy that and bring it up an octave, starting from our E key again, which is there. So we've got two octaves of the E minor scale there. And then I'm going to do that again. And then probably once more, just in case I wanna reach some high notes. So there we have multiple copies of the E minor scale there. So what can we do with those notes? Now, what I like to do is move them over there, making sure you keep them in line so they don't go anywhere. Right, so now we've got multiple octaves of the E minor scale repeating, which is seven notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then just repeating over multiple octaves higher. So what I'm gonna do is start with our root note, which is E, which is just your first note in the E minor scale. And what I'm gonna do is go up um, five semitones, so that's five keys after your first note uh, in that scale. So one, two, three, four, five brings us to C. But I'm gonna go up an octave there just to get a bit more, you know, low and highs going in there. And then literally you can just paint notes, to be honest. There's no, the, with your be only having these keys uh, that you're sticking to, you're always gonna be in key technically. Now I know everything's gonna sound right together, but it's gonna be very difficult to get it wrong. Uh, so literally we can just go <coughs> there and then I'm going to use another key as well which can be that. So let's listen to that. So as you can hear it's a very nice sounding chord. Now a chord progression consists of multiple chords playing one after the other. So what we can do is bring that across um, and to to make just a simple chord progression, if we bring this across a bit, so we've got a bit of room to breathe. So there we have two of the same chords. What I'm gonna do is bring this up a few keys from the bottom here. So, you know, maybe up to here, and then check all your other keys are, you know, still on, on note, on these reference notes at the side here, which I can tell this one isn't, because as you can see, that leads to there where there isn't a key. So if you just drop that, go up, up rather than down to the next key because it usually sounds better. That's something I've learned anyway. So let's try that out. So that bottom note sounds a bit off, I think.
So I'm just tinkering around to see what kind of progression. I mean, this technically is always in key, but you know, some chords go better with others. So just tinker with it until you find something you like. That doesn't sound too bad. I'll move on for the sake of the tutorial. I'll go up another one. So that sounds okay, uh, but it sounds a bit boring because it's just going up, 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 and up. So that's where you can kind of start getting a bit playful with how you're approaching these notes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down another octave, just so I've got some more reference keys down here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Go back down to E. There we go. I'm going to keep them top notes, but I'm going to bring my lower note probably down to a C. Uh, yeah, let's listen to that. So as you can see, it sounds a bit better. And then I'm going to bring this across. I'm going to go up there. I'm going to bring this down a little, down to about there. Bring that down. Try that. So that sounds pretty good, I'm not going to lie. So we can just carry that on literally. See this is again what I was saying earlier, this is what kind of prompted me to make this tutorial because it's so easy to just carry this on. Now we can just literally just keep pacing across and then we'll go back down here, bring that down here and again we're just referencing them things. So if you drag a note you'll see it takes across and shows you where, where we are over here. I'm going to take that up a little bit just to give it a bit more depth, so... So that is a really prominent low uh, note down here, which is really good, but you need to place it correctly, like at, on the fifth bar there of that chord progression. It doesn't sound... it needs to grip you. Um, so maybe try that over here no it doesn't sound right uh, probably bring that out down And then we can probably bring it down again. And back up. That sounds really good down there. With these lower notes. So that sounds pretty awesome. Now, what you need to be careful of is not resolving your chord progression, which is a whole kind of new thing on its own. But basically what you want to try and do is create your flow in the in the progression that you're creating back to this root chord or root note rather. So you always want to try and find your way back to the E um, or the chord that consists of your E key. So here we are pretty close to it down here with this low note. See how that kind of resolves those three keys? So boom, boom, boom. But this, it sounds, it, 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 you can tell you're missing out keys. So you've got a couple of options. I mean, you could go back to this here and see how, see how that sounds. And then you, the jump's going to be a bit thing. But then that obviously is going to then affect this, this jump. So you've got to keep that in mind. You've got to try and to resolve your chords. Now, if you do a little bit of Googling and stuff like that, you can find some really good information of resolving chords and whatnot and what 
to do and what not to do but i'm not going to cover that in this uh, tutorial because it kind of exceeds the scope of it but let's listen to that now that i've made that change That doesn't sound too too bad. I mean, it's resolving a little bit better now with that just that one little note, but I could go further into that if I wanted to and resolve it better. Um, but basically what you're listening for is, it should be able to loop very easily without you being able to tell it's just restarted. Um, now that would become much easier to disguise if the longer your chord progression is. So, you know, play about, experiment and see what you get. Now, I'm gonna get rid of that. So we've got this chord progression here. We can do some awesome stuff like I'll duplicate that. Sorry if you can hear my keyboard presses, by the way, it's a very sensitive mic. So I'll mute that. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab Spire. Uh, Spire. And uh, I've got a lot of presets on here. So what I'm gonna do is just try and find a little lead or a pluck or something. Something that's not too crazy. Look. That doesn't sound too bad. And if we pop an arpeggiator on there, now we've got a lot of presets here that you can use, or you can fiddle with this anyway. Um, it's a really cool plugin. It's included in Logic. So, you know, I really encourage people to get used to these uh, plugins that are included. Um, I mean, third party plugins are really good, but, you know, the ones that are built in are just cr like crazy good in themselves. So you all know what an arpeggiator is, I would imagine. It just kind of um, cycle through through notes that you've um, got in your MIDI region. So what I'll do is if I play this now, it's going to like, you'll hear it's much more of a, a sort of a lead sound instead of a chords. So. If I then grab a kick. Uh, let's have a look. <laughs> Come on. Oh, actually, I'll find it. I'll grab it in the finder over here because it's a bit quicker. Uh, plus, you don't see all my porn on my hard drives. Nah, I'm only joking. I'm only joking, guys. I'm only joking. Uh, if I go to samples and I try to find some good kicks, let's have a look. Uh, three, do we have anything in E minor? Preferably we need it to be in key with the progression that we're in. Uh, the scale that we're in rather. Uh, let's have a look. Vengeance is always a good one. Uh, we kind of want a transfer kick. I don't want much of a, that's pretty soft. Now it might, I'm not sure if it's in key, but we'll uh, we'll just carry on anyway. Just so imagine that this kiss it, kick is in key, even if it isn't, it should still sound okay. So we've got that there. Let's make a quick, oh, didn't mean to delete that. Let's delete this. Uh, what I'm gonna do is grab some side chain on here, uh, which I use LFO tool for that. And I use sidechain preset two, and that gives me a nice um, sidechain, which I then usually adjust later on in the track making progress. Um, so if we play this now, it should sound pretty cool. That sounds pretty awesome. Um, and then if we, I mean, we can play about with this arpeggio and get a lot of different um, effects. So I'm going to copy that, the default. I know it's the default, so we can always find a bit of copy. It sounds good, we can always go back to it. So if we play about with this.
So I like that, and that sounds pretty good. So if we then go back to our spire and kind of play with the, um, the settings in our synth here, we can e further enhance that sound, so. chord sounds a bit high so I'm going to bring that down to here and you see this uh, this last key here and this one this is what I'm talking about resolving so there's kind of a big jump between that key and that key so what we could do you know we should really come back down try and work his way back down here sounds much better so that's the uh, the key to resolving keys really You're just trying to get as close as back to your original one uh, I mean in some cases you can even copy it so literally get these four notes and put them here uh, but it kind of sounds a bit monotonous and you really I know I said to try and not get it so you can tell it's looping but then you know maybe you can you can't tell too much if that makes sense um, so yeah just try and get close to it that's uh, that's the best thing I can say for in case in in terms of resolving now so we've got like a cool app here we've got our original strings so what happens if we play them together uh, like We'll put a side chain on them strings again. So let's play them together and see what that sounds like. That sounds pretty cool. Now what we need is a baseline too. So for the baseline, what we can do is literally grab our chord that we created, get rid of all that. And this is kind of our lowest note. So this is our base. And what we can do is bring that up a few octaves, maybe one or two, probably two. Uh, we need to get rid of the app, which we'll be using in a second. Uh, we want like a nice soft bass, nothing too crazy. Nope, not that. and beefy but what I'm going to do is arpeggiate that as well uh, if we go down to a groove cycle they're usually good for bass lines do is kind of EQ this through so this bit is kind of high so I would get rid of the bass because we've got a, a bass now that can you know take the forefront for the uh, the lower frequencies down here so we can kind of cut that here bring it slightly up at the top end probably get rid of some of that there uh, for strings I'm gonna say we want to keep some of the bass so I'm not fully cut out but man, you know, those real low frequencies we could probably get rid of. And then a bit of mid. So we've got us lead taking up this uh, high end on the right hand side. Strings are kind of taking up this middle bit and then we've got us bass down here in the end, uh, which is side chaining against this kick, which is also very low. <laughs> Just remember we didn't make those changes to the, those keys so I'm just going to duplicate that just to fix those, that last chord. So 
So there we have it. You are well on your way now to creating a full length track out of those chords. You could then go another step further and create a lead out of this, um, which, you know, just a single lead that isn't uh, arpeggiated, which we, shall we do it now? Yep. You know what? Let's do it now. So what I'm going to do is uh, duplicate our spire down here, get rid of that arc because we don't need it. I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to get rid of some of these in the net, these bottom notes because I don't think we need them. And all I'm going to do is shorten these, get that, and then I'm going to move them across. So we have a lot of keys here and then I'm just going to literally randomly uh, delete some of these and we're going to create a, a, a lead out of that. Uh, my point is with this whole tutorial is you, you you really don't need to put that much thought into this uh, the theory side of things as long as you know these these few tricks and things to you know create yourself some boundaries of what keys you're using you really it's really difficult to go to go wrong so and then we can literally delete some of these change the preset we want a lead sound It doesn't sound that great on its own, but hopefully that should fit in. All right, I'm just gonna boost some of these just so it sits, sits kind of in the middle over here. Bring that down a little bit. this I'm just trying to make a lead here out of random notes. So that sounds a bit, a bit crap. I can remember there being a C in that, uh, in that scale. So I, I, that's just not a random note. I'm not just plugging that. Out. I remember that that's in the E minor scale. So. So that, that lead doesn't work very well, but you know, you get the gist of things. Now, another thing that I wanted to show you, and this is kind of a short good, shortcut to what we've already learned, but I wanted to show you this last because, it, as I say, it's a shortcut, and I wanted you to understand the, the notes that we were inputting and why they were there and why uh, those keys consist in that scale. But as I said, there's a, a real cheat way of doing it, basically. If I... You know, put all these notes in there. Well, let me just make sure the line up. So there, I've just plonked down some notes. Random notes, make sure we get some black keys in there. So now you wouldn't know which keys in those keys are meant to be in the E minor scale. But what you can do is, you might have already seen it down here, is scale quantize. So what we can do is we can set that to natural minor because we're in the minor scale 
um, as I said, that's that's this scale here, as opposed to this scale here, which is the major scale. It's just the same thing, but it's all the major scales with different keys. I will link both of those uh, in the description below so you can find them and refer to them yourself as you're making music. But to get back to what I was saying, you can pretty much guess what this is gonna do. So if I highlight these now and change this to E, E minor, now it is only showing the keys that are in that scale. Can you see how easy that would be now? So I could literally just go boom, and uh, as I said, I only want to use four keys, so I don't remember what keys we were on before. Highlight those, press this Q, and that's just moved that one note up there, so it, it turns, I, I didn't do that intentionally, but it turns out there was only one key wrong. Uh, and now that is in the E minor, uh, scale and you can literally do that for all the keys so if I press that we don't get any movement because we were already in the E minor scale but we kind of did it manually so if I play that now uh, I, I can't, like I said I don't remember what was here but hopefully this was different from what we originally had so if I play that it should still sound okay uh, I'll just solo that out Just to add another uh, little tip onto this uh, this tutorial as well, um, I actually rendered this out and then rem remembered to pop this in there, so I'm kind of recording this separate from the rest of the tutorial, so uh, forgive me for the, the quick cut if it happens, but um, this is pretty important and it will help you tenfold. So all I'm gonna do here again is write down all our um, all our keys from the E minor scale, all seven notes again, so, and you'll you'll see why in a second. So C, D, E, so that says E there, which is a root note. And then we're gonna write all those notes, which is that, that, uh, that, 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 and that. Right, so uh, the reason why I'm writing them in, in again is to make sure we've got every key from that um, from that scale. So I don't know if all these keys consist of the seven keys in the scale. So putting them down there, make sure we've got every single key. Now, are you ready for this? This is gonna be an awesome, awesome thing. So have you, have you been doing this so far and you've got some notes down but you keep knocking them into the wrong thing and you're having to revert back to your, your normal keys well, there's a magic little button up here, this button here. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna get rid of all the other keys. So literally every single line now is in the scale. You get what I mean? So you cannot go wrong anymore. You cannot wrongly place a key. And if I go off that, so maybe, you know, that, that key is not in our scale. You know what I mean? So if I put that down, with this pressed and all your keys on the uh, MIDI, the MIDI region anyway, you cannot go wrong. So I could literally go, move this around, go up there, over there, down there, up there. You know, I can go anywhere. I can do anything I want. And hopefully it, it will still all be in key. As I say, some chords go better with other chords, but that's a whole different thing. So, there you have it guys. That is my quick run through on a little bit of music theory without the boring crap that is usually involved in music theory. Uh, and I can't stress how much you can grow from just this little bit of information and how useful this can be for you in creating tracks. Um, so if you stick by this, learn it in and out, maybe watch this video a couple of times just to try and understand it. Give me a few messages, comments below, and I'll get back with you with any questions that you've got. Maybe you want to go a little into it a bit more advanced. I might be able to do another video on that if you would like that. Maybe go into the resolving a bit more, as I said, because that, that's kind of a, another video on its own. Um, 
But either way, if you enjoyed this video, smash that like button down there. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. I've got a ton of videos already on my YouTube channel. Um, things have been a bit slow lately because I've moved house about three times over the last year. Um, but I'm back settled now and I can hopefully get some videos done. I just need, I, I, I kind of need some support guys. You know, I need you behind me. So if you give me a push, smash that like button, give me some comments or whatnot, that will just push me and give me a kick up the ass to make some more videos. Um, so yeah, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you learned something. As I said, let me know if you have. And thank you very much for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.